Hey everybody, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake. So usually if I was going to do a review, I'd probably do it as like a Tech Tuesdays kind of thing, uh, which you should definitely check those videos out on my channel. I'll leave a link to that playlist in the description below. But this is more graphic design oriented because today I'm going to be reviewing Adobe Photoshop CC 2014. So for those of you who may not be familiar with what I'm talking about, Adobe with the Creative Crowd subscription model has set up a new release cycle where they will be doing yearly rebranding of all the Adobe products in their software suite. So they'll be 2014, 2015, et cetera. Uh, with that in mind, the latest release and the first iteration of this is Photoshop CC 2014. So some of the new features we got were definitely the uh, focus area blur, which is the big one that I cover in my tutorial. We've got the um, spinning motion blur and a lot of other little tweaks here and there. Uh, there were some more ones on the design side that were definitely a lot more important, like the new smart smart guides where we actually can see things line up the way that we could in InDesign. So that's fantastic for people doing layouts and doing web design. Um, a lot of new features for how you actually export um, objects and package them if you're actually going to be doing web design. Big improvements there. Just a lot of overall stuff that was really interesting and too long to go into. I'll probably do that in the article that goes with this video. But the point is, I'm going to give you a review on my impressions and my feelings about Photoshop CC 2014. Now, as far as the features that I use 2014 for, the big one is focus area blur, and I feel like it still has a ways to go before it's fully refined and improved. I think that it definitely helps when you use it for photographs that you have, um, you know, a good established um, shallow depth of field in, if that's what you're going to be working with and you want to extract backgrounds, then that's actually perfect and it works out really well. But it doesn't do 100% of the work for you. You still have to get in there with the fine edge, but it does you know, take a lot of the heavy lifting out of it. So I'd say that it's a good tool. I want them to improve on it the way that they have masking and refine edge. So you know, that's my thoughts on that. The motion blur stuff is actually pretty cool because of the way that you can utilize it artistically. Yeah, you could have done some of this stuff manually, but things like spin blur are actually really useful in terms of really quick speed and productivity, and you can get super creative with it, uh, especially if you're doing intense visual effects. I'm probably going to be using it in some photo manipulation stuff for some more action-y kind of things that use energy beams and just do something really cool and outlandish so you can see what that's really like. But Again, did we absolutely really need it in this iteration? No. If you are a photographer, there are some reasons to upgrade, especially the new camera raw profile that goes along with this, so that it might be compatible with your newer cameras, like the Nikon D810, for example. So you might want to upgrade simply for the fact that there are camera profiles that you'll get if you're still working with camera raw, if you're not using Lightroom, um, you know, and there's reasons to do that, believe it or not. So there are reasons to upgrade. Now, can you still get by on Photoshop CS6? Absolutely. It's still one of the most powerful versions of Photoshop out there. So for you perpetual license users or you people who want to be perpetual license users, the argument is yes, there are features that are exclusive to CC and there is a long list of them. For Photoshop, yeah, you can still get by with CS6 for doing the basic work that you've been doing for the last 10 or 20 years. And I wouldn't recommend getting something less than CS6 or keeping something less than CS6, just get CS6. It's going to be the best, most productive, most stable version of the software, and you're going to be very happy with it. With that in mind, I actually really like 2014, and one of the other reasons besides the new smart guides and the stuff from the photography side is I like the way that handles type libraries a lot better, and I do like uh, some of the new features for layer comps. I don't usually use layer comps, but the way that they've actually organized them properly to make sense now is actually going to encourage me to use layer comps from now on instead of just doing what I've been doing, which is using um, different group folders for these different types of files and layouts and so on, because that's super repetitive and redundant. and I do a lot of duplication there. It's just actually simpler to use layer comps where they were so frustrating before, but now they've simplified that. So for all of you doing mockups, in Photoshop, that's going to be extraordinarily helpful. And the new outputs for things like Retina, that's going to help you as well. So if you're doing stuff that's more related to that, I would say that this is definitely a good investment for you. In general, there's nothing wrong with CC 2014 for the most part. The feature set is very powerful. It is an improvement from the previous version of Creative Cloud, and it's an improvement from Photoshop CS6. Do you really need it? 
maybe not, but it definitely can improve your workflow in some areas and make you more productive, make some things faster, and make some things simple for you. So that's always a plus side as far as I'm concerned if you're doing this work for a living the way that I am. But those are my thoughts and my review of Photoshop uh, CC 2014. Now, with regard to some of the other software, Illustrator got much better overhauls, in my opinion. InDesign didn't get that much. Um, Premiere got some good stuff, some really good stuff, actually, especially if you're um, a YouTuber like me. So again, there are reasons to upgrade to Creative Cloud 2014. If you're using individual software, you'll have to pick and choose and see if the features are worthwhile for you. I found Photoshop CC 2014 to be very good for my workflow, for the type of work that I do, and very helpful and a worthwhile upgrade. I'm going to recommend it um, out of everything, and I'll do a breakdown in the description or in my article, uh, but ultimately, this is going to get probably a 9.5 from me overall. I'll do a specific breakdown of the grade that I give it, again, either in the description or in the article that goes with this. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review of Photoshop CC 2014. If you're having a different opinion on Photoshop CC 2014, I'd love to hear about it. Leave it in the comment section below. Try to keep it focused to a review or your opinions of the software and not so much a you hate Creative Cloud kind of thing because I have a whole nother video for that. Anyway, thanks for watching.